Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. It looks like we've already got Chris saying hi in the chat, which is awesome. Hi, I am Laser. I am so excited that you are here. And we're going to do some crowdfunding chat this morning, um, which should be a lot of fun. So let me know if you can hear me and see me. Um, you should be able to at this point, I believe, in the little corner. Um, and I'm... Um, We've got a handful of folks, which is great. Uh, we are going to be talking about a couple things. I have a little presentation I want to give you about communities. And then I want to get uh, some feedback going and answer any of your questions about um, your status uh, on your crowdfunding projects. So first of all, I want to hear from you. Um, where on this timeline that you can see on the page uh, are you on your project and uh, what what are you making? Um, so you can see there's numbers here from one to eight. Um, so tell me where you are, um, like what's the, the latest step that you have completed? So completely. And then um, if you skipped any steps, let me know. And then, yeah, let me know a little bit uh, where, what you're, what you're up to. Although I know some of you already. Um, awesome. So the first thing I wanted to talk about a little bit was community, and um, I'm going to go over community in a couple different aspects. Whew. I'm going to try to talk a little bit slower this week because I know last week I was a chatting it up a little bit swiftly. Um, this week, a, we are talking about how to grow your community, what a community is, why it matters, um, what the difference is between like a community and like fans and an audience, um, and uh, what a uh, and how you can um, grow your audience by going into other communities, which is awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, so first of all, let's check in on your numbers. Um, number four, Scrap Arts Music is where you are, Justine. Awesome, growing your audience through content collaboration community and your email list, perfect, because that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, Eames70, which I believe is our new friend, Chris. Um, you're on all parts of three to six at once. Okay, cool. Well, now you see this, um, maybe we want to give it a screenshot so you uh, you know kind of what order to do these steps. And it's very helpful, I find, to have an order to complete things in when you find yourself overwhelmed, um, having way too much stuff to do. Uh, maybe putting one foot in front of the other is a good idea. Uh, become every ready is super important because um, once you start really building that audience, um, bringing new people in, you're going to want to make sure that they can find all the information that they want, that they can join your mailing list, um, that they can turn on your refrigerator really loud right when you start streaming, um, that they can uh, follow you on social medias and all of that stuff um, before, uh, before you start putting a whole bunch of work into growing that audience. And um, and then knowing what size your audience is is super important when you're planning the logistics of your crowdfunding campaign, because you want to know what a realistic goal is. You want to know what kind of rewards work for your audience, which you can't know if you don't know who your audience is. Um, and then planning that promotion also, you need to know where those people are. So let's just do these one foot in front of the other, super important. Sharon, still at number three, it's a big number making a website an Amazon page launching and uh, being as you are a author in a very mainstream genre um, you want to make sure that's very polished so good good job good job good job um, Fiona and Josh seem to both be in four which is growing your audience through content collaboration and community which is perfect again like I said um, that's what we're talking about today um, if anybody, uh, if you have any point, any questions, I definitely encourage you to drop those in the chat. Um, like if you already, if you came to this event with questions, if you came to this event with, um, roadblocks, um, I really, really like talking out specifics of your projects. 
Um, it is my favorite thing to do, uh, brainstorming ideas, um, brainstorming specifics, hearing about what you're doing, all of that's super fun to me. Um, if you sent me an email, remind me so I can go find that um, and uh, make sure that I read that um, and give you feedback where you want. And if you have anything you want me to give you feedback on, like your website or um, your project or whatever, um, I'm here for it. Nobody here is going to steal your ideas. Um, we are all um, here to work together to make awesome stuff. All right, but let me jump into my presentation. While I give this presentation, I'm just gonna do that and then I will come back to the chat and grab your questions. Um, I'm also thinking that it might be good for me to um, bring somebody in every once in a while uh, to this Zoom to chat one-on-one -on -one about your project. So if any of you are at a point where you're like, I have questions, but it might be helpful to like actually talk it out. Um, I guess I'll make that call, but but just drop your uh, drop your questions in the chat. I am here for you. I'm doing this because it's fun for me. All right, so let's go over to this cool presentation that I made. Uh, I'm gonna move away from this project lifetime. I hope you had a chance to take a look at it. Because today we're talking about community. Um, and this is actually inspired by this tweet that I saw the other day um, by Hank Green, who is one of the early YouTube um, mavens um, he's, he's really really great um he started the big youtube convention um and a bunch of other big conventions he's he's awesome and he's an author um and, and what he said in this was my advice for tiktok creators today is the same as it is as it is for all creators on the internet every day you can't just make content you have to build community it's just so true um and uh, when I talk to creators who are about to launch a crowdfunding campaign, one of the things that I tell people to do is create content. Um, and and when I say that, I, I'm, I'm meaning that you're creating content to build a community, you know, but um, this really kind of illustrated that to me of like, let's make sure that we're doing both. Um, when I tell people to build a community online, I want you to make sure that you have a lot of content online because then people can you know dig into what you do they can get to know who you are and then they can spend a lot of time with you and the more time they spend with you the more you become a part of their identity so whether that is stories or books or videos or live streams concerts music vlogs q a's blogs whatever it is that content does help you um, to get that um, relationship. But as Hank says here, it's very important to also build a community. But how do you build a community? What is that actually, what does that actually look like? Doesn't it just kind of spontaneously pop up if you're the right kind of artist? Um, sometimes that's true. I mean, you can see that like some movies, for example, um, very strongly create like a strong Tumblr community around them, right? Without even trying. Um, but I have some th ideas here on like how, what makes your art the kind of thing that will have a community around it, um, how you can work on creating that and fostering that. Um, and um, even if it is not like the biggest community in the world, why it's important um, even if you don't have like a Facebook group with a thousand people in it, just like what is a community for you? What does that look like and why it's important? So first of all, I, uh, I, I did some definition work. <laughs> what is a community in this context? So it's a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Um, just a helpful thing to have a little bit of definition. So your community, they don't just all like you and your art they also have common attitudes interests and goals so this goes back to a little bit of what i was talking about last week which if you missed is just making sure you know who you are making sure you know why you're doing what you're doing and um putting that all together in a mission statement so that um you are really clear about why you're doing what you're doing and your audience can also be really clear about why they are on the same page as you you know what do you believe in um and is that really clear? Like you don't have to be saying your mission statement, but is that really clear in everything you're doing? 
let's look at some more community definitions. So this is like not necessarily really applicable definitions, but I thought that these were things that um, when I heard them, they were like ticking boxes for me and I thought might do the same for you. So let's, let's just read these and think about them and think about how they might apply to a community you might build online with your art or with your creation. The community has five functions. And again, these are like a bunch of different scholarly articles that have to do with all different kinds of communities, but production, distribution, consumption, socialization, social control, social participation, and mutual support. These are all really interesting, right? Like, what does that mean in the context of your community? Mutual support, like people making friends, people um, getting to know each other. You know, the, the, the first time that people who met at one of our shows, like ha got married or had a baby, like it was like, wow, this community is like something that um, it really is, you know, a community, it's something that's real. So how do you foster that social participation, social con can, uh, control? I don't know about that, but maybe that means like you're able to enlist your community to help you fundraise for a political cause or fundraise for something um, that is meaningful for you. Um, socialization, uh, social participation, mutual support. Okay. Um, and then this next thing was from a list of like 13 things that are aspects of a community. And then again, this was like from a different scholarly definition of community, but community sentiment, which refers to a strong sense of feeling amongst the members of a feeling of belonging together. It grows spontaneously is what a, uh, something with community. So that's like, I think very important, like you can't say we are a community. You, it has to be something that um, grows spontaneously from a feeling instead of uh, being put together and fenced in. Members of a community are similar in a number of ways, not just one way, but a number of ways. A community has wider ends. Commu members of a community associate not for the fulfillment of a particular end, but for a variety of ends. And every community has a particular name by which it is known to the world. So. Again, this is not like a definition of um, an online community about art, but I think these are all things that are like interesting to think about um, and might uh, might be helpful for you when you're thinking about when you wanna build your community, wider ends, not just one uh, purpose for your community to exist. Members of the community are similar in a number of ways. It grows spontaneously, um, maybe it has a name. So these are just, just put those in your brain and think about them. So let's talk about your community. Now, communities can look like a lot of different things. This can be like, it, let's, let's, let's talk about what a community might, you might think one looks like. So for example, um, the, the fandom of a fandom community of the double clicks does have a Facebook group, right? With a couple thousand people in it. It's my band and those are people who talk to each other and they post memes and they post pictures of their cats and dogs and and talk to each other but i don't think that is the full extent of that community right it's not that's not what the community is that is just one place where the the community manifests itself the community is like really everybody who likes the band maybe not every single person who has ever come to our show but the people who really um, have the same emotions about it, right? And who want to support each other and want to support similar things. Um, the community of Hank Green uh, fans are all over the place, right? They might be in some Facebook groups. They might be on Tumblr posting gifts. They go to conventions. They go. Um, they go. They go to to various meetups. These are all. <laughs> these are all uh, different kinds of ways that these communities might participate with each other. And those, those are pretty big, but a, a smaller community, I mean, it could be a, like a coffee house group that gets together that's just like 15 people who come together every week. Um, it could just be a, you know, like an email group, like a, a chain, an email that's like 10 people. Um, and it's also, it, it doesn't have to have a boundary that is defined on the internet, right? It's, it's um, there doesn't have to be a wall around it. It just has to have this feeling of community. In my opinion, it's not one place. It's this set of, um, the set of, of uh, strong sense of feeling of, 
uh, of belonging, of um, similarity in a number of ways, right? So, um, yeah, think about that. So why do you need to build community? Let's talk about that. An ideal crowdfunding audience, if we're thinking about this in a pragmatic way, needs to be a community, not just fans or listeners. So if you're trying to get a crowdfunding audience together um, that is going to back at a higher rate than just a group of fans would or just everybody who follows somebody on YouTube, like really, really faint, like big viral YouTube kind of folks will not have as much um, transference to a Kickstarter page as people who have a community, even if they're much smaller. You wanna have a community, not just people who are like casually watching, not just fans that don't think about you again. So the ideal crowdfunding audience needs to be a community, not just fans that are listening. Is invested in the art and the creation and the next thing being created. They're like, okay, I need there to be another thing because it is meaningful to me. The community exists to think about the art even when you are not there because the community is an extant thing, right? It is, it lives on in between creations. This is very hippy dippy, I realize, but I believe in it. Um, communities stick together longer than fandoms. That's another good reason. A community includes the artist, but it is not all about the artist. A community provides value beyond the art, a sense of belonging, companionship, enhancement, and working towards goals. So this is why you need to build a community. Uh, I hope that is compelling. You do. It's better than not having one. How do you build a community? Okay, so this is like um, the, uh, the, the question that all of this is leading up to and I realize this is the good stuff. So providing activities, activities, so much room for activities as my husband says over and over again in our house. Um, providing activities. Participatory art is a really good way um, to uh to get to to make your art about more than just yourself so um this can mean a lot of different things but um for example um asking your fans for suggestions of words asking them to submit photos asking them to submit videos um asking them to you know make a collage of art with you you know all of this stuff is is participatory art and then when they see not only themselves but the rest of the community in that art um then this is this is a piece of community art it's not just a top-down art i mean it's really all about bringing everybody together i i have um this image in my head that i think about all the time here is a piece of paper um let's see if i stop the share and show you um of so here are gatekeepers at the top right and they tell you that in order so the gatekeepers might be things like um record labels or agents managers you know uh amazon all of uh, spotify all these things um And they tell you that in order to get to your audience, you have to go through them, right? This is their whole thing is that you have to go through the gatekeepers to get to them. But what crowdfunding does is it completely eliminates the gatekeepers and it just goes boop. It's this, you go straight from the artist to the audience and it's the best. So when you're able to create art as well that goes straight from the artist to the audience where there's really no separation, right? We're like, we're all making this together, which isn't to say the audience has to be, have a say in what you're making, you know, you, you have boundaries. Anyway, it's extremely valuable and it's basically my religion. That was just the first two words of this slide. Let's move on. Live events, obviously an amazing way to um, build community. Um, if you can, whenever we have the energy to like play a board game at a, a show beforehand, um, and we often don't, um, but we can kind of like participate with a community in addition to um, just doing a show, 
that like is really, really wonderful. But often people are just there playing board games with each other, even without us needing to be there, which is awesome. Um, can you play a game, uh, a different kind of game with your community? Um, <laughs> can you play a game with your community um, that involves uh, uh, a, 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 any sort of um, like a, a bingo if we all collect the same thing you know chat rooms like discord are awesome we're all talking that we we create a hub of the kind of place where we are sharing our favorite things so that's like a chat room like discord or facebook group where fans can meet each other um which is great so like i it is one of my favorite things when i because i we have met so many different people around the world and around the country and i just like y'all would really get along and the more we do this, the more they have met each other, which is great. Okay, so making content that responds to your fans is my next uh, point here. Shout out to them, thank them for fan art, encourage them when the community activities happen and make enough content that they can react to it. So all of that, that's a bunch of different things is really important, but making content that responds to your fans is really important. So um, just making it clear that you are listening to them, you know, that you and them are on the same level. Um, so if they like had left a comment on your last video, you might feature that in your next video. If they're, um, if, it, you know, like, like make a, a nod to them in your next piece of content. So they're like, okay, me reacting to this content is a valuable thing. Um, just encouraging that is, is great. Um, and then watching and enjoying other art together. This is so important. Being enthusiastic about other people's art, not being exclusively interested in sharing and talking about your own stuff. But like, um, if people like you, they might, they probably um, have, a, there, there are probably artists similar to you, whether they're in your same mode or different. Like um, I, as always, I'm looking at my Kandinsky paintings. Um, I'm looking at, I have so many different, uh, cartoons of cats around my room like the kind of art that I like is probably the same kind of art that my audience likes because we all have the same influences right so um being a big fan of art and sharing that with your fans means that you're all kind of doing fun things together so remember that a community is not just about one thing okay that's providing activities providing goals is super important fundraising um, not just for you, but for also for charities, um, uh, providing something that everybody can do together is a really good way to build community, um, sharing personal stories, you know, like finding a way that's like, we want to get, um, I don't know, we just want to gather a hundred pictures of dogs for some reason, right? Let's sh share a hundred personal stories about dogs. That's a really fun goal. Like whatever is easy and great. Um, and then providing space with rules, um, so if you if people know when they come to your community that they're going to be safe um, to be themselves in whatever context that you encourage that um, is really, really important. So live events, Facebook groups, rules, uh, Facebook groups, forums, whatever you think your audience likes um, when you think you've gotten to a point where it's going to be self-sustaining, super important. Um, one thing that I get uh, a little bit concerned about is when I'm working with a client um, an artist who can't think about, you know, five to 10 of their fans by name, um, and tell me like what they're into. Um, I know a lot of us have taken other classes where we're like encouraged to imagine your ideal fan, but by the time you're crowdfunding, um, you should know who your fan is. You should have introduce yourself to your fans at shows you should be mailing like i um i remember when at the beginning of of my career i would be mailing shirts to everybody and i'd be like hand addressing labels so i knew all of my fans by name for a while because there were not that many of them um and i knew where they lived and i'd, I'd meet somebody and like tom and then i'd know their last name and i'd know like their state because um there are not that many of them and and then you get to know everything about them it's like oh you're the one with the dimetrodon you're the one who likes this kind of board game like you should really care about your audience um and i think that me caring about my audience and really like being a bigger fan of them than they are of me sometimes has been something that has really helped me um in this community building aspect so i would encourage you to remember that this really isn't about you um it's about this community okay that's it 
about that. Ooh, this has been fun. Um, I have, I'm seeing there are questions. Please keep dropping questions because this presentation is almost over um, and I'm going straight to questions after that. But I want to talk a little bit about tapping into existing communities to grow your own. This is something that I talk about in my class, uh, Crush Your Kickstarter, and I think there is a little bit confusion about it um, just in general um, because it's hard. <laughs> Growing your audience is hard and you want to go find people who would be interested in it. And um, that's the kind of thing that you could spend kind of infinite energy on, right? This is why people are constantly touring, constantly opening for other people and, and constantly um, throwing themselves at the wall. But right now you can't go anywhere. So how do you use the internet? How do you use the resources at your disposal to grow your own community, to find people who might like you? Um, and let's talk about, first of all, what, what doesn't work. Bad and efficient ways to use community. So yelling about your band at the stage at someone else's concert, that would be a bad way to do it. Just going to um, a They Might Be Giants concert and saying, I'm in a band called The Double Clicks and I think you'd like it, um, is not helpful. And in a similar vein, joining a Facebook group and immediately just dropping a link to your art like, Oh, this is a, a group of people who like bands. Um, hey, everybody, check out my band, The Double Clicks. I think you'd like it. Um, it might it might get a person to click on it. Um, most likely, it's just going to get deleted. It's just not, that's not how community works. It's not about just popping in and dropping something, right? A community is about a group of people who have common goals, a group of people who have common interests. Um, it grows naturally. So let's talk about like, where do you find your communities and how are those gonna help you in a natural and beautiful way? So be an active fan of other artists and befriend other fans of that artist. So that is a natural community. So just go back to the beginning of this, how do you create a community of your for your art and then find other artists who have done this for themselves, um, whether they are uh, you're a musician and they're a musician, you're a visual artist, they're a visual artist, or the opposite, um, and befriend them and then work together, maybe make some fan art about their art. This is something I have done a lot of in my time. Um, there was like, there's a podcast called Comedy Bang Bang, um, and we would create uh, songs that they, um, very silly songs, um, and they played them a couple times at the end of that podcast and that was really fun and then other fans who listened to that podcast and we knew that you know obviously they like that podcast and we like that podcast so they might like us would hear us and be like okay maybe they would like us that's a cool way to grow your audience because um uh that 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 um is is a it's it's this it's the same i don't know it's fun um create fan art. Uh, I've written a lot of tribute songs about stuff I like. I've covered songs of bands that I like. Um, I've, uh, it, it, and try to participate naturally in supporting other artists and loving artists and loving art. Um, and I encourage you to do that. So join communities that you're interested in that have nothing to do with your art. So examples, hiking, podcasts, meditation, um, and then provide value to those communities through your art. So if it's um, like a local uh, a community um, that might need a theme song for their, uh, what have I written theme songs for? So many things for their new game store opening or um, for their convention or for their board game or what, whatever you're, the friends that you make, you're looking for friends instead of fans. Um, how do you provide value through your art? And these are the ways that you use community, right? It's not about this like exploitive, like I'm here, I'm throwing a grenade of my art um, and then I'm leaving. It's more about let's take this word network and remind ourselves that this is actually natural and friendship and community is really fun um, and, and we should be enjoying it. Um, so um there are some worksheets in my class um about doing this naturally um and there are like a lot of really great 
communities that exist that you could find that are specifically made for artists to grow. Um, Amplify is one that I see some of you talking about. There's one for games um, called Tabletop Backer Party, I believe. Um, there are lots of communities that are there that are like here to help you, but you have to do the work as well, right? It's never gonna just be as easy as dropping a link and walking away. So do the work. Okay, that's my presentation. All right, and I am gonna go in here and look at your questions now. Um, okay, I want this content. Okay, here we go. Um, I'm gonna go back to the top because that's gonna be a little bit easier. Q for later, that is super mechanical. On Kickstarter, does a $10 pledge count as a micro pledge or does it need to be literally $9.99 or less? I don't know about micro pledges. Um, uh, pledges under kicks, under $10 have a micro pledge fee of 5%. Um, looks like it's under $10. So that would be $9.99. Great question. Um, Do, 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 you can email me for the slides if you would like, Fiona. Thank you for the compliment about my Phasma shirt. I have a bunch of shirts that didn't fit me before that fit me now because I had... Anyway, we don't need to talk about that, but I'm very happy about it. Okay. The project I'm getting ready to fund is a documentary miniseries, six episodes, competitive Tetris. To access larger parts of the community, I'm looking for like podcasts and similar. Most people who want this content are not necessarily fans of me, but are fans of a thing I have helped make this Tetris competition for a decade. Any thoughts on that? I do have fans, but the bigger thing has more. Um, okay. That's a really good question. Uh, so the thing you're making, I mean, I will say that it's not entirely dissimilar from my life where my band has more fans than I do, um, but it's still the same in that um, you just do the work through the thing, um, right? You the, the, When I say you are building community, it's the thing that's building community, right? Um, all of this is completely applicable if it is still the Tetris competition. I love that. Um, uh, having a Facebook group where people talk about their Tetris scores or sharing Tetris memes or um, talking about the latest Tetris news and also um, like, what is your point of view on um, whatever the, the, the issues are of the day. I don't know if you want to be super political, but like maybe um, we are anti-cheater and pro-positivity. You want people to be happy about games or you want people to be uh, happy about retro games and uh, accepting of new games, whatever it is. Um, maybe that's an issue that you can all work together on or something like that. Um, the, that's, it's a really cool idea. Um, for that, I think that one thing that you really, 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 hopefully I've already done, but really should be working on is a mailing list. If this thing already has a fan base, um, but doesn't have a mailing list, I guess, let me know. Um, and we'll talk about it. Um, but um, that is, a, it's a good question, but um, it's not that different to make a community for a thing than it is to make a community for yourself. Um, and in fact, all of the stuff I'm talking about is not me, it's my band. And um, it, it works exactly as well as um, personally, if not even better because a cult of personality is a little creeper. Um, okay, can you pitch us your class, please? I would love to pitch you my class. That what It's like, um, I'm going to do it really briefly though, because a lot of people here are already in my class. Um, I do, I have a class. It is called Crush Your Kickstarter. Um, it's really, really good. It looks like this. You can find it at course.lasercampaigns.com, course.lasercampaigns.com. In this course, um, 
you will learn how to build a Kickstarter from 14 self-paced lessons, eight hours of content and 25 worksheets, um, everywhere from creating your mission plan and um, preparing your audience, being discovery ready, all the way through creating your ideal crowdfunding rewards, your budget, um, and promoting your project. All of the various parts of the project that can go wrong are addressed in this class. I personally have raised over a million dollars um, in crowdfunding for people in games, music, um, and, uh, oh boy, what else? Art, books, um, comics, um, and, and I, and that number is growing as I have a few ongoing campaigns right now. Um, I'm really good at what I do. And the course um, is in addition to having a video element, you can um, elect to uh, have a, um, some calls with me where I will give you personal feedback and a personal plan and a personal timeline and um, personal feedback on making sure that your course, your exact Kickstarter is successful. Um, so that is course.lasercampaigns.com. Thank you for that great question. All right, Mandy, you are such a pro. Oh, that's not a question, but thank you. Um, the competition is basically the community. I'm basically, I'm well placed in it to talk to folks. That's awesome. So it, it sounds that, I mean, that, that sounds really good. So, um, um, I would say then making sure that that community is accessible to you is my main concern before you launch a project, making sure that community is still engaged, um, and invested, and then that you create a project that has rewards. Sorry, I'm back on the Tetris thing right now. Um, that, 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 project has rewards that people are really interested in that are at the correct levels. Um, and because um, documentaries film really hard to get good levels um, because people don't really buy DVDs. Um, you got to work really hard to make sure that those things are, are properly placed and that you find really, really good um, rewards. So all that stuff is on my course. There you go. There's another pitch. Um, question about the Facebook group. Does Facebook still have its tentacles in it? Should I be redirecting all our new fans to that world instead of the page? Um, I mean, you should be directing all your new fans to your mailing list. Um, and then you can throw out, uh, instead of Facebook or anything, I would say your main goal should be to get new fans as soon as possible to your mailing list. And that's what we do. And um, whenever we get a new fan, please join our mailing list. And then what we do is we say, um, we have a series of emails that people get over the first month or so. And like, they're like, um, Hey, welcome to our email list. Here's some songs. Here's a YouTube video. That's really fun. Here's an hour of music that you can watch on YouTube here, by the way, is our Facebook group that you can join if you're interested in that. Um, Hey, do you like social media? Here's a Facebook page and a Twitter and whatever. Um, so yeah, I would say mailing list first, because that's probably going to last longer. Um, and then Facebook group for people who are excited about talking about you. Um, Facebook pages are really helpful because um, it's um, it's helpful for selling ads um, to people, but because um, you can target it to people who like your Facebook page. But I'm more concerned about um, getting them on your mailing list. Uh, yay. Okay. Those are all the questions. Um, does anybody here have anything they would like to get feedback on or want to chat about your projects? You're doing a great job. I'm very proud of all of you. Um, I think next week we are going to talk about, cause we did community today. Um, Maybe we'll hop into rewards and we can talk about um, what makes a good reward. Um, but uh, I'm also super down um, if anybody wants to tell me like what you're working on right now. Um, my main goal with these chats um, is to um, have you come in and tell me what you're doing so that you are accountable to continuing. Um, so if you are in my class right now, hopefully you have done the first couple of lessons and you will do two more before next week. Um, T. Perrin Mitchell, how often should we send stuff to the whole mailing list like newsletters? Okay, so there are a lot of different um, thoughts about this, T. Perrin Mitchell. Um, 
I used to do a monthly newsletter and then I took a course that told me to do basically weekly newsletters. Um, I think as with all things, um, it is possibly better to let the content dictate um, the newsletter frequency uh, so that when people open the newsletter, they're happy to get it. Let's do like a really quick rundown on helpful things about a newsletter. One really good thing to do with a newsletter is when people join your email list to um, welcome them to the list. Um, obviously they get like a confirmation email and hopefully it has like a freebie in it, but don't have that be the only welcome. Um, set up some automation so that that person who has just joined your list gets a couple of emails um, over the next few days. Um, so like I was saying, like, welcome to the list. I'm so glad you saw it at the, saw us at this show would be something that I do. And then, um, a couple of days later, did you know we have a YouTube channel? Um, oh my gosh, my cat's here. I wish I had treats I could get her so you could see her. Oh my gosh. Hold on. This is more important than this stream is you seeing my cat. Look at her. She's so beautiful. Hi, Marzipan. Okay, bye. Okay. Um, um, and then, yeah, just like, here's some content. Here's some more content. Here's some stories about me. Um, that kind of thing. So uh, that might be for you, like, here's, here's a cool thing to watch. Here's why I started this comic. Just, like, get to know you. Um, and then in future newsletters or future emails, um, the most important thing is to only have one thing per newsletter. So there has been a long history of people sending out newsletters that have a bajillion things in them. Like, welcome to my newsletter. Okay, this week we're going to talk to you about, I have a live stream coming up. I have a store. I, uh, here's a free song. And also um, we're working on this thing. And also we're going on tour later. That's too many things for one newsletter. People basically email works a little bit better if you just have one thing per newsletter. And that means I think probably sending out email one, more than once a month. Um, so that's what I've been working on and it has been working quite a bit better. Um, it may mean that your newsletter gets winnowed down a little bit, like people start unsubscribing or don't like casual folks, um, people who didn't really, who aren't really ready to be a super fan, um, <laughs> aren't, um, uh, sticking around, which I think is fine. You really want the really enthusiastic people to be on that list anyway, because those are the people who are going to join, um, uh, join your, your community. Um, but yeah, so, so it might end up being like a weekly newsletter because you put out a new piece of content every week and you want to tell people about it, or you have a big piece of news every week. And also, um, I would say something to look into if you are this kind of nerd, which I am becoming, um, is segmenting your newsletter. So like, these are all the people who really like reading a comic online. These are the people who are just going to buy it. Um, these are the people who are going to attend live streams. Um, these are the people who joined in this particular place. And like, these are the people who only are going to open a really big email. And so I won't email them more than a couple times a year, but these are the people who are opening everything. Um, and those are segments that you can make based on, um, information that you get. If you have one of the more robust systems like MailChimp or FanBridge. So that is some nerdy information. One thing per newsletter. Yes, Josh. Exactly. Okay. My boy Boo and I are Dane Warren of Dane Warren Entertainment, and a natural spinoff has been Mad Jazz. We're making the Facebook page for Mad Jazz, but wonder if a website dedicated slowly. To, uh, okay. All right. I need to know a lot more about what's happening here. Um, okay, so. Dane Warren Entertainment looks awesome, very sexy. And then Mad Jazz is a different thing. Okay. Um, I see. Okay, so Mad Jazz is is a different a different thing. Okay. Um, I. 
if these are very, very different, I would say maybe, but I, I, I generally discourage people from splitting their brand um, when they create new projects. Um, because it means that you're you have to start all the way over again with your audience. Um, so unless like you think that your audience is super not going to be interested in mad jazz, um, who are there for Dan Warren entertainment, um, I might think that probably it's okay. Um, for now, I think you're fine. Um, just having one. Um, I have a, I have a friend who, who is constantly creating new projects and always creates like a new Twitter for it. And then it has to like restart their audience building over again, every time. And it's very frustrating to me because it means that they never, um, they're never building on what they had. Um, uh, it's, um, they're, they're never like growing. They're just always like restarting, 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 restarting. Um, it might be helpful to have like, uh, like on your actual website, just to have like a subdomain that explains what mad jazz is, um, and how it's different from Darren, Dane Warren. Um, like, I think it's always really important to have clear definitions <laughs> of what everything is. Um, so, uh, you know, clear bios of everything. This is what this is. This is what this is. This is how they're different. Um, but they don't need to be totally different. Um, places. There was a question about MailChimp and ConvertKit. I use FanBridge. I, I do not uh, care what email thing you use. Um, I have found that I just, FanBridge is what I used when I started and I'm sticking with it because um, just learning a new system is really hard and it's more important just to like make stuff than to be thinking about things at this point, just like at a certain point, you have to start stop learning and stop making choices that don't have a strong effect on what you do and just like, just do the thing, you know, just do the thing. Um, so um, eventually, uh, I mean, MailChimp is great. Uh, ConvertKit is great. FanBridge is great. They're all like great systems, um, competitively priced. So whatever you use is totally fine. Um, just figure out how it works, figure out uh, how to make it work for you and then uh, and then use it. It's great. Um, it's mo most of, like, um, truly the technology is important, but the, like getting to know yourself, getting to know why you're doing what you're doing, um, and, um, feeling it, <laughs> that's the important thing, right? Like, even if you never segmented your audience and you just sent out a meaningful email to your, uh, to everybody once every two weeks, like that's better than being trapped in the world of understanding technology for six months, right? Just like do it. It's okay. Just do it. Um, and, and you'll, you'll be rewarded for the, uh, the feeling of create creation. <laughs> um, it's very easy to get caught up in the exact right way to do things. Um, which is, is, a uh, understandable cause you don't want to be, um, well, you don't, you don't want to feel like you, you're making a mistake, but um, if you're doing it because you feel it and because it's meaningful to you um, and you're not compromising your principles, um, then, then I think it's okay. There's my kitty. Hi, kitty. You're so beautiful. Kitty, kitty. Oh my gosh, she's so beautiful. I love her so much. Sorry, buddy. I am not sorry. I love her. She's beautiful. Um, okay, this is... Uh, all right, I think that's going to do it for today. Um, feel free to drop me an email if you want me to review anything with you next week. Um uh, feel free to, uh, let me know what's up. Uh, Mandy, I would not recommend getting into FanBridge if you're choosing an email system now. And I don't think I would recommend Banzoogle either. Um, so do one of the other ones that the other people recommend because FanBridge is not currently being maintained. Um, so, uh, but 
thank I'm glad that you're looking into something. Um, the, uh, 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 yeah, drop me an email, lasermolinaweber at gmail.com. Um, if you want me to go over something with you, I'm here to motivate you. I'm here to love you. Uh, course.lasercampaigns.com if you want to check out the course. Um, I'm here for you. And this is like one of my favorite things to do. So I'm so glad everybody was here today. Um, we will be right back here, coffee.lasercampaigns.com again next week. And um, yeah, you're beautiful. Um, I really appreciate you being here. So I'm going to put up this um, lifetime thing one more time. And if you, uh, if you do want these slides, just drop me an email at laser... Melina over at gmail.com if you want these slides and I will uh, I'll go ahead and send them to you. All right. Bye friends.